Koi, Christian Lenzo, and John Burnett still with us here. Historic Supreme Court decisions on ruling on the uh, student debt forgiveness as well as affirmative action in college admissions and religious business owner rights. So join us now is the, with more on those details is the former Attorney General, Matt Whitaker. He, Matt, I want to get you first initial reaction to this court decision. Uh, did, was it the right decision in your opinion? Well, it, w it was. It's good to be with you all. Uh, you know, I think part of what John Roberts and the six of, of Republican appointees, some argue they're conservatives. I, you know, would probably argue against that, but sometimes they get it right. And in this case, on the affirmative action, um, you know, the, the if you read the opinion, it's very clear that you can't fight racism with more racism. And you know, it is to some extent um, these universities, especially Harvard and other elite universities, uh, were putting their thumb on the scale and deciding that African Americans were somehow more worthy to get in than Asians uh, of, of the same qualifications. And you know, we, uh, I think, our founding fathers set up a meritocracy where uh, you know everyone should would have a level playing field, uh, equal opportunities, not equal outcomes. Uh, and so, you know, obviously, as we try to move towards a more perfect union and, you know, we need to stamp out, you know, the legacy of our past. But at the same time, you know, we, we can't give unfair advantages uh, just based on somebody's skin color. And I think, uh, you know, Mr. Uh, Justice Thomas really uh, laid that out uh, clearly uh, talking about, you know, the different experiences of all Americans, not just based on skin color. So, you know, I think it is it was the right decision in that case. Betsy, you're up. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, General. Glad you're with Good us. Morning. Uh, what do you assess the impact of this decision against Harvard and UNC will be not simply in colleges, but looking beyond that, there are a lot of lawyers and in-house counsels who are already warning companies that they, the targets they've set, the quotas they've set for blacks in hiring and uh, promotion and senior management, these affinity groups set up in business, that th those are in trouble. What is your view on this? What's, go what's ahead in the business community? Yeah, I think it's going to take some time, uh, Betsy, and that's a great question, to, for this opinion to work its way through more than just higher education. I think at the end of the day, what this opinion really says is that you just can't depend on someone checking a box and then, you know, trying to make your categorical decisions based on that box checking. You have to look behind, uh, you know, the person and their and their their experience and you know maybe maybe their race has uniquely impacted them uh, and and then you can take that under consideration but what you can't do is categorically uh, make quotas categorically uh, hire people just based on what box they check you know but at the same time you know this is something that you know our the gen Z uh, and Millennials uh, almost 50 percent uh, are non-whites, and it's only going to increase. And so, as a as a multicultural and multi-race uh, country, one of the unique ones, the way you know our founding and our development, uh, you know, these are issues that I think we all need to consider and, and make sure that 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 the United States always lives up to our constitutional promise and the and what's written on our Declaration of Independence, because those are our founding principles. And the and the, the closer we stay to those, Betsy, I think that is where uh, we prosper and, and the American people, uh, you know, succeed. Well, there are several uh, court cases that came out that were favorable to conservatives this past week, um, particularly the student loan crisis uh, decision. But um, while that might be favorable to conservatives in terms of the outcome, they might say that the, some might say that um, this will hurt the conservatives long term because essentially uh, people are now going to have, have to pay their student loan debt. What's your take on this and um, the polit political ramifications? Yeah, so obviously the legal case is very simple, that the President of the United States did not have the power under the HEROES Act to forgive $400 million of student loan debt. Uh, that being said, uh, Joe Biden never thought he had the legal power to do that, and no you know lawyer worth their salt ever thought that that power was in the HEROES Act. And so this was a crass uh, political move to try to get 
people that have student loan debt. Because remember, uh, there's two sides to, to this debt forgiveness. You have the person who owes it, but then you all have also, if it's forgiven, then somebody is ultimately paying for that uh, because that's either, you know, the government's borrowing that money or taxpayers are paying it. And so what happens, it's people that have paid off their student loan debt and it's people that uh, work blue collar jobs and never went to college or incurred any student loan debt. And so, you know, it's really, it's unfair. Now, this is an issue to your point that the Democrats are gonna wanna keep alive, but I hope that the folks that are impacted by this have their eyes open and understand that, that that Congress needs to pass that law and their yeah. elected representatives need to pass that law in order to forgive a massive amount of student loan debt. Always great points. Uh, always love having you on too. Uh, Matthew Whitaker, thank you so much. for.